there's been many uh, players for the Montreal Alouettes who can be called uh, superstars or uh, top flight players. But today we're going to be talking about someone that called himself the self-proclaimed ordinary superstar. I've never heard about this term before or since, but I think uh, it applies to this guy in spades. Of course, we have to be talking about the great Johnny Rogers. Now, Johnny Stephen Rogers, uh, born in the United States, played college football for the Nebraska Cornhuskers and won the Heisman Trophy in 72, the first wide receiver to win the award. Now, Rogers eventually was signed by the Montreal Alouettes of the CFL and also played for the NFL team that drafted him, the San Diego Chargers. He was eventually inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame in 2000. Now, uh, he wore number 20. He also played uh, uh, running back and wing back. Born July 5th, 1951 in Omaha, 5'10", 180. Came out of Omaha uh, Tech and again signed on with uh, Nebraska. Now, he was eventually drafted by San Diego in 1973 in the first round with the 25th pick. However, he decided to uh, uh, go to the CFL where the money was better and the uh, what he called uh, the black question was a lot better as well. Now, he's nicknamed the Jet for his rapid acceleration and speed on the field. He was also the high school athlete of the year as a player for Omaha's Tech High. Now, as a player at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, he served first as a punt return specialist, then a pass receiver and running back. He broke virtually every offensive team record, was twice named in a college football All-American team, and won the Walter Camp Award, the Heisman Trophy, in 72 for most outstanding player uh, for college squads in the U.S. Now, he's three years with the Cornhuskers. The versatile Rogers established an all-purpose NCAA yardage record of 5,586. Now, former Nebraska coach Tom Osborne, who served as Nebraska's offensive coordinator in the early 1970s, wrote in his 1985 book, More Than Winning, that Rogers had the greatest ability to return punts of any player he saw. Likewise, College Football News has described him as the greatest kick returner in college football history. Now, Rogers returned seven punts for touchdowns, which was an NCAA record at the time, and one kickoff for a touchdown in his college career. Now, Rogers was uh, kind of a, a dual personality. He was at one time convicted of a gas station robbery while he was a student at the University of Nebraska in 1970. He is the only Heisman winner who had a then-present felony conviction before receiving the award. He was eventually pardoned by the Nebraska Board of Pardons, and his convic conviction was vacated on November 14, 2013. He was later charged with assault in 85 while living in Southern California. Now. In 1971, and what has become known as college football's game of the century, Rodgers returned a punt 72 yards to score the first touchdown which set the tone for his team's 35-31 victory over Oklahoma. ESPN described Rodgers' performance as unforgettable. However, some observers considered his greatest single performance to be in the 73 Orange Bowl, which I watched, when he led the team to a 46 victory over Notre Dame. According to uh, legend, he was recruited by the Alouettes via that contest. Now, Rogers ran for three touchdowns, caught a 50-yard pass for another TD, and threw a 50-yard touchdown pass to a teammate. He did all this before leaving the game with 21 minutes still to play. Now, 1970 for, for his big squad, 39 carries for 20, 219 yards, four touchdowns, 39 catches for 70, 110 yards with seven touchdowns. 71, 40 carries for 269, and 57 catches for 956 with 13 touchdowns total. 72, 73 carries for 340, uh, 348 yards, and 58 catches for 1,013 yards, 19 total TDs. Now, although a 1973 first-round draft pick of the San Diego Chargers, he signed a lucrative contract well into six figures to play for the Montreal Alouettes of the CFL, where he was affectionately known as the Ordinary Superstar, a nickname he coined. Always a fan favorite, he won most outstanding rookie in 73. In his first four years with the Alouettes, Rogers won the Jeff Russell Memorial Trophy twice, Eastern Division MVP and CFL runner-up, was either a CFL or Eastern All-Star each season, and helped lead his team to the Grey Cup in 74, and they were Grey Cup Finals in 75. Now in 77, 
Rogers returned to the United States, signing a huge contract, 925000 uh, with the Chargers. Now, hamstring injuries kept him out of the game for most of his first NFL season and a following year of freak knee injuries sustained during team practice and in his career after only 17 NFL games. Now, a big uh, Grey Cup season for him. 1,024 yards receiving in 1974 with uh, seven touchdowns, and he also rushed for 402 yards with four touchdowns. But 75, he's all-purpose came in, 849 yards receiving, 293 yards rushing, 912 yards in punts, uh, 76, 749 yards receiving, 50 yards rushing, and 931 yards in punts. And, of course, he had the big 101-yard punt return in 1975. So, CFL totals, 59 games, uh, 186 receptions, 3,463 yards, 18.6 average, uh, 28 touchdowns, rushing 216, 11.38 with 7 touchdowns, and punt returns, uh, 135 for 18.43 yards with 2 touchdowns, again, both in 75. Now, in 1999, Rodgers was selected to the Nebraska All-Century football team via fan poll and named to the All-Century Nebraska, Nebraska football team by Gannett News Service. In 2000, he was voted University of Nebraska's Player of the Century by SI. In 2002, he was named to the Athlon Sports Nebraska All-Time team, and he's only one of 16 Cornhuskers to have his jersey retired by the squad. Now, in 1999, he was selected as a receiver by SI in their NCAA football all-century team. Other receivers selected were Jerry Rice, Mike Ditka, Pat Wickner, Timmy Brown, Regid Ishmael, The Rocket, Don Hudson, Bernie Ooster Oosterbahn, Howard Twitty, Ted Qualick, Anthony Carter, Keith Jackson, and Desmond Howard. Rogers was one of six Nebraska Cornhuskers on the all-century team's 85-man roster. That included Rich Glover, Dave Remington, Dean Steinkohler, Tommy Frazier, and Aaron Taylor. Now, in 99, Rodgers was selected as a starting receiver for the Walter Camp Football Foundation College Football All-Centuries team. Other receivers selected were uh, Fred Belitkokoff, who also played the Alouettes, uh, Tim Brown, uh, Ber uh, Bernie Oosterband, Larry Kelly, The Rocket, Don Hudson, Howard Twilley, Key Jackson. Rodgers was one of, one of six Nebraska Colin Huskers selected to the 83-man roster, the others being Ribbington, Steinkohler, Rochies, uh, Frazier, and Taylor. On the college football news list, of 100 greatest players of all time, Rodgers uh, was ranked number 44. In 2007, he was ranked number three, 23 in ESPN's top 25 players in college football history lists. In 2000, Rodgers was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and was also voted the MVP in the history of the Big Eight. Now, Rodgers is also a legend on the northern border of Montreal. He honored him with a special homecoming on September 11, 2011, 35 years since he last wore a Lark's uh, uniform. He was greeted with a standing ovation. Now, Rogers was reported to have become a devotee of Guru Mahaji uh, G, headed the Divine Light Mission in 1974, which uh, tied in with his title of the Ordinary Superstar. Now, he met him for the first time in January 76 to discuss the Guru's international tour, and in an interview at the time stated that he had joined the Divine Light Mission out of a search for a deeper meaning in his life. Today, Rogers is a businessman in Omaha, where he operates a sports marketing company and betting products manufacturer. He also works with his alma mater to encourage athletes who dropped out of school to return and complete their educations. Now, Rogers has also authored a book entitled An Air of Greatness about the University of Nebraska football team during his playing days. Rogers was also president of the Malcolm X Memorial Foundation from 95 to 2005. Now, in 2007, he was a brief partner at a sports bar located in Midtown Omaha, bearing his name. In uh, less than one year, the partnership fell apart, and dueling lawsuits ensued. He is uh, also uh, involved with a mentoring program for children with other football and sports professionals. Now, in May 2014, he served duties as a vice president of the new business development at Rural Media Group. Now, I saw Johnny Rogers play, and let me tell you something, more moves than x uh, exciting, personable, charismatic, 
but uh, the old uh, Montreal Alouettes blue and white jersey, the logo, Johnny Rogers was the Montreal Alouettes. Of course, Sonny Wayne was the unofficial quarterback leader, but boys, oh boys, oh boys, the Quebec, the Quebec announcers especially. Oh, the Johnny Rogers, the vedette of Nebraska. <coughs> uh, by the way, there was an era for the CFL where the Montreal Alouettes would bring a lot of major stars. Uh, Belitnikoff was there for a while, Billy White, Chu Johnson, David Overstreet, uh, Vince Ferragamo, uh, uh, Williamson as well. But the Alouettes, again, in the mid-1970s, was the closest that the CFL had to an NFL marquee team. There were that, uh, a good fan base. Good TV numbers, tremendous. And Johnny Rogers was perfect for the CFL with the open field. Uh, too bad injuries uh, hampered him. I would like to see him made, made a comeback in the early 80s because for freak's sake, yeah, what's going to use them, especially during the Scalbania area. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with our CFL Adventures podcast, let us know with a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, you're only as good as your last Johnny Rogers, which means your last uh, uh, punter kickoff return. Thanks for listening. Bye.